Thank you very much uh, for this kind invitation to participate in the European Bifurcation Club meeting this year uh, virtually in 2020. I'd like to present our work entitled Clinical Outcomes Following Coronary Bifurcation PCI, uh, and this is a network meta-analysis approach. My name is Carlos Colette. I'm an interventional cardiologist from OLV Alst. So what do we have as a background? That we know that despite several randomized clinical trials comparing PCI bifurcation techniques, the optimal technique is still a matter of debate. Provisional stenting has been recommended by the European Bifurcation Club as the default technique for most bifurcation lesions. Nevertheless, as bifurcation techniques evolve, new techniques have been described aiming at improving clinical outcomes. In that sense, recently, the DK crush technique has shown in randomized clinical trials favorable clinical outcomes compared to other PCI techniques. Therefore, we aim to perform a network meta-analysis of randomized clinical trials comparing clinical outcomes after PCI with different bifurcation techniques. And what is new about this approach is that for the first time, we are able to identify the potential benefit of a particular one or two stent techniques instead of the previous meta-analytic approach that, were, that combined one versus two stent uh, uh, PCI techniques. So we include randomized clinical trials with patients that underwent PCI bifurcation uh, for bifurcation lesions and had at least six months of clinical follow-up. We, the primary outcome of interest was major adverse cardiovascular events. This is MACE. And these MACE were defined according to each protocol, uh, to each randomized clinical trial. We also defined secondary outcomes that were cardiac death, myocardial infarction, target vessel or lesion revascularization, and the occurrence of stent thrombosis. We estimate odds ratios using a Bayesian network meta-analytic approach. In this approach, we synthesize direct and indirect evidence regarding the clinical outcomes related to that specific technique. First, we apply a random effect meta-analysis for each treatment comparison, and subsequently, a random effect consistency model using network meta-analysis to assess the relative effects of the multiple treatment comparisons using a Bayesian framework as mentioned. All the results that you will see in the next slides are odds ratios with 95% credibility interval. So when we performed the search, this is what we found, uh, 840 citations. And from there, we found 21 eligible trials comprising more than 5,700 patients. When we look at how were these patients distributed uh, among the techniques that we investigated, and you see in this network plot that I have two relevant information. One is the size of these bubbles, of these circles. The bigger the size, the more the, more the patients that were included in that specific technique. And when we see also the lines that connect these dots, the thicker the line, the greater the number of trials that have compared these two techniques. For example, there are five trials comparing the provisional technique with the DK crush techniques, and you see the absolute number of the patients between brackets. The first finding that we have in this meta-analysis is that when we assessed the risk of bias, you will see here in the last column, the overall, we have very few happy green faces. Most of these faces are yellow, which means that the quality of the evidence was moderate. And this is important to bear in mind and to understand the limitations of this approach and, of course, the impact of the overall conclusions. To show you the studies that we include, this is the list of all the studies with the clinical characteristics. This slide is not intended to be read, but I will summarize to you that the mean age of the population included was 64 years old, 22% of the patient had diabetes, and the most uh, used technique in this meta-analysis was the provisional technique in 34% of the cases. When we look at the event rates stratified by PCI techniques and a mean follow-up of 12 months, we'll see that we're talking about a maze rate that range approximately from 10 to 15%, a range of cardiac death in this population of patients with coronary artery disease in bifurcation lesions of about 1.8 to 3.3%. And you see the overall rate of myocardial infarction that is also uh, has a big range from 2.7% to 10.1%. Most of the variability concerning these endpoints, of course, arise 
due to the different definitions in these endpoints as assessed in the individual randomized clinical studies. This is the overall find. This, by the way, was published a couple of months ago in the journal of the American College of Cardiology, Cardiovascular Intervention, and this is the primary result. So we're looking now at the forest plot of maize, again, 21 trials, 5,711 patients. Everything that is on the right side of this forest plot means that it favors provisional. It means that all these techniques are compared against provisional. And everything that goes to the left side of this plot favors the technique that we are investigating. For example, if we start by CRUSH, the CRUSH technique, you see that this black line that depicts the 95% credible interval touches the line of one, therefore there is no significant difference between provisional and crush for the outcome of maize with an odds ratio of 1.23. However, we immediately see that the line of the DK crush is towards the left side of the plot and doesn't touch the unity line, meaning that there is a significant difference favoring DK crush compared to provisional for the outcome of maize. And how big is this effect? Well, We'll see here the odds ratio showing a 61% reduction in the occurrence of maize in patients treated with DK crush uh, compared to provisional. When we try to understand where this difference comes from, we will see the five, the four individual endpoints that we have analyzed within the study. You will see that there is no difference in cardiac death. You will see that all the 95% credible interval lines touches the one, meaning that there is no difference in cardiac death. There is no difference in myocardial infarction. However, we do see that the line of decrease crush is uh, towards the left, nevertheless touching the line of one. But when we look at target vessel revascularization, you will see clearly that the advantage of DK crush comes mainly for a reduction of target lesion revascularization, as shown here in this uh, 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 plot and with this point estimate of 0.36%. Finally, we found no difference in the rate of stent thrombosis between bifurcation techniques. We went a little bit further on and then we started to look at uh, anatomical bifurcation characteristics. And one of the things that we had in our database was the side branch lesion length. The median side branch lesion length of all these studies that you see in the screen was 10.1 millimeter with a quart interquartile range from 6.3 to 13.9. And I would just like to point uh, to the fact that the uh, majority of the studies showing benefit of DK crush had relatively long lesion length compared to previous study. Nevertheless, the, the analytic approach that we use was to divide these two group of trials according to the median side branch length that was 10.1 millimeter. And then we performed a per-wise meta-analysis dividing the, the trials according to the median side branch lesion length. And you will see here that now we perform an analysis of one versus two stent techniques in patients with short side brand lesions and the same thing, uh, one versus two stent techniques in patients with long side brand lesions. And what we see is that there is no different what concerns maize in uh, patients treated with one or two stent techniques with short side brand lesions. However, when we look at these trials that had long lesions, there is a clear benefit of two stent techniques over one stent techniques. We have to highlight a number of limitations that our analysis have. One, we were unable to obtain individual patient data for all studies. Therefore, we perform a study level meta-analysis. Second, six of the studies exhibit high risk of bias. And these were the phases that I was showing in the previous slide. This was mainly related to routine and geographic follow-up which may have led to a higher rate of repeated vascularization. Third, the provisional stent technique may have not been used uniformly uh, across the studies, and that is also a limitation when you try to compare these uh, outcomes of different trials. And finally, the concept of POT, of proximal optimization technique, was introduced around 10 years ago, so it was not performed in the large studies that were performed before this day. Nevertheless, we can conclude that in this network meta-analysis of bifurcation techniques, DK crush was associated with reduced maze, and it was driven mainly by lower rates of repeat revascularization. There were no significant difference between techniques in cardiac death 
MI or stent thrombosis, and a clinical benefit of two stent techniques was observed over one stent technique in bifurcation lesions with sideburn lens more than 10 millimeters. Thank you very much for your attention.